they, uh, when they acclaim this altar, as the children of God start to decree, me might say that my own don't done. And God continued to that miracle. And I joined the grace of God to help of God. My testimony goes like this. You see, a whole cell, children of God will gather there. We continue. Small, uh, for, the, for the other, the last May when he passed, one of our members there, Driver Pekin. This, uh, this August when he just passed, yesterday they come us again that another person Driver. I say, Father, receive your honor. Hallelujah. Save delivery is your portion. Praise the Lord. My name is Queen Ed Patrick. I've come to give God glory for delivering my uncle from the hands of untimely dead. Yesterday, as my uncle was coming back from Portacourt, traveling to the village, that is Cross River State, he said that the car had an accident and the vehicle hit trailer. It did not just somersault, it was hitting everywhere and almost everybody in that car died, but he came out safe. He was just screaming, I am a covenant child, I will not die until the vehicle landed. So I've come to give God glory. There shall be no loss in this assembly in the name of Jesus. It's my new dawn era. My name is Jesse Agede. I've returned to give God thanks about five months ago a young girl that was staying with us uh, just disappeared but precisely on the 24th of march and it was such a mystery we did not know where to start or where to go i came to the church office i met with the the, the assistant uh, resident pastor he prayed for over a picture and anointed it a few days after our mommy the resident pastor's wife called and assured us that she'll be found just last week she was located and has been returned home. And as that was unveiling, God also blessed my family with a brand new car. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a blessing for you in this service today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm Moses Suleiman. I stand there in fulfillment of a promise I made to God last semester. Uh, I was offered provisional admission into the Department of Civil Engineering, Natural State Polytechnic. It was a very late admission, and when I resumed, it was like just a month to exams. So the pressure was very much. But I want to thank God because the result was released, and when I saw my result, my GP was excellent. In the history of Civil Engineering Department, Natural State Polytechnic, God gave me a GP that nobody has ever crossed. I want to appreciate God for his faithfulness. Outstanding success is your portion in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I am Ezekiel David. I have come to give glory unto God. This morning I was rushing to come to church. So I went to the bathroom to take my bath. As I was just pouring the first water on my body, I slipped on the tires and I fell on the floor. I don't know how I helped myself. I find out my hands was on my head. Thank God nothing happened to me. I am safe and sound. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's my new dawn era. My name is Debbie Richie. I want to bless God for his faithfulness upon my life. On the 17th of August, I was called from the house that my family members were all hospitalized. I was wondering what could be wrong. And when I go home, my mom said, my immediate younger sister was cooking, and mistakenly she used one chemical in cooking. And 12.30, the last one of us started coughing, started vomiting blood. When they were trying to help that one, the one she's following immediately started vomiting. The five of my siblings were all rushed to the hospital. I want to thank God for the kind of parent I have. I want to thank God that he did not allow me to be called home to come and see seven cops of my family members. I've come to return to the God. You enjoy preservation. If Sister Linda Honor, please come forward. Come forward for your own testimony. Linda Honor. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God has given me wonderful surprise. My name is Beatrice Paul. God has given me wonderful surprise. On Saturday, in the night, then my brother when me are in the work for Beckering, Obi. He called me for phone in the night. 
say my organ need me to come back. And when I'm doing business here, and my say my organ call me to come back. And I don't know how I go do. I tell I say I'm going in the work what they do here. Oh. You say if that place no go do me where I make I come back and I decide to come back. Sorry for that though. I'm going to miss my father blessing today. Father, before you pass. <laughs> Second one, the God of my father bless me with some money will not belongs to me. And I keep them for one week. I don't see the honor and I decide to use it. I receive God own to bring it. See the honor I pray for God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. By grace of God, my name is Sister Blessing Annie. My testimony goes like this. I come to return all the glory for this God of this commission to save me from January to this September. It's a great thing in my family. I say this God has done it for me. He will did it for everyone that sitting inside this house today in Jesus' name. My second testimony goes like this. God has granted me to do what be BBC. I return to say thank you, Jesus. And then my son called me two days later for that uh, our activities and tell me for inside here say that he know where. I return glory that he have give me testimony that uh, all the prayer that we have made that he have, re he have regained himself in Jesus name. Thank you all my children. The Lord will answer you in the name of Jesus. It's my new dawn era. My name is John Kelechi. Uh, the devil failed. I've come to thank God for failing the devil in an attempt on my life on this birth month. My birthday is 30th of September, but the God devil failed. Yesterday, I was on my way to go and buy feed for my birth, on my way to Akwanga, after Nasarai gone, just around Gidon Wire. Uh, a Sharon was overtaking a trailer, and uh, he was on top speed. So I, up, when I saw him, I flashed light for him, like, this is what are you doing? And then when I saw he was still coming, I swerved off the road and I was running into the, driving into the bush so that he can still pass. But even as I still continued into the swamp, the Sharon guy, because of the speed he was in, he failed brake and he used my car, the driver's side, the driver's door, everything as wage. My car turned twice into the swamp, but I've come to give God all the glory that I come out alive to testify and nothing happened to me apart from this cross on my head. Yeah. There shall be no loss in our midst in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm Sister Linda and I've come to return all the glory to God because my faith had worked for me. Last week, Friday, I started having pain on my waist. So I was wondering what was wrong with me. I said, let me hold on. My husband said we should go to the hospital. When I went, I was on drip, antibiotic in form of drip. Two in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night. I took like nine. And any time he's entering my body, my body will start swelling. I was like, God, what is happening to me? Any time I take it, I'll just be feeling somehow as if I would die. I said, God, my children. Then later on Tuesday, I told my husband that I was not going to take it again. Let my faith work for me. That was how I continued. They changed it to tablets. Anytime I take, I'll just be feeling somehow. I said, God, let my faith work for me. On Friday night, our daddy in the house appeared in my dream. In my dream, I was outside. Then he was preaching here. He said, tell that woman that is outside there should wait for me at this entrance after the service. I didn't wait for the service to end. I just came and stood here, waited for him. Then he came out through this door and laid his hand on me. And that was how I got up yesterday. I was able to do everything. For this that the Lord has done, Shall we celebrate him in our seated position? Lift up your hands to him. Give him all the glory. He is the one behind all the testimonies. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name forever. In the precious name of Jesus Christ.
perfume. As I was going, I was here, I was still hearing, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. Guess what happened? After that word came, I will never forget that experience. <laughs> I was getting money as if uh, I had one deposit somewhere. Someone will come, eh, I've been looking for you, see, my lie. He has not been looking for me. Something triggered the money. I say you are blessed. So as we finished, we got to that stand where they are selling uh, canoes, obo, all those things. You know that place now. Another person saw me, he, he, they were living inside an NPC quarter. I said, he's a custom officer. I said, where have you been? I've been looking for you. I said, this man. I said, you see me now? He said, just come. <laughs> he brought 15,000, gave to me. So and I said, bless, I'll go to position that place again. <laughs> so that I'll be hearing, you are blessed. I say to you, you are blessed. I said to you, you are blessed. I said to your soul, you are blessed. I said to your spirit, you are blessed. I said to your family, you are blessed. You are blessed is not a greeting. It's a prophetic release upon you. You are blessed. Your expectation is blessed. So shall it be. This month of September, what you have never handled in your lifetime, in terms of blessing, will land for you. Say amen like a believer. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Put those hands together. In Jesus' name. I hope you, you heard the announcement beginning from tomorrow. We are kicking off the seven day prayer and fasting. So as you've closed from service now, make sure you pass through the market and buy the heavy size of apple and eat enough in the name of Jesus Christ. You better say amen. amen. Because if I hear saying, you know, come this fasting, eh? I'm not saying I'm hungry, do you? So, if you finish now, go and load very well. Eat one this afternoon. Eat one in the night. So that you will be heavily loaded. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> I, was, I was so excited when I saw it all. Because all through in the office yesterday while I was praying, I was just hearing seven days fast, seven days fast, seven days fast. I just wanted to do it alone. I didn't know it was going to be a general thing. Praise God. So get ready. Every of your blessing that is yet to be released, it must answer this week. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Like I said in the first service, fasting accelerates destiny. You have suffered enough slow motion. Give your destiny an accelerated push. It will look as if your body is dragging. No! Fasting helps you to change gear. It changes the frequency of events in your life. No wonder Satan will bring every form of manipulative force just to tell you, you don't do now, you don't do. You don't do it. Is it not 11 o'clock? You can break now, you can break. Because you know what he wants to do? He wants to pause. Say with me, pause. He wants to pause what is about to be released for you. But refuse to accept. I say refuse to accept. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. 
And you know, during fasting, that's when you have the highest temptation of food. Oh, who they fry this chicken now? Oh, why is this jollof rice smelling here now? The jollof rice is not your problem. Condition your mind to fast. You will fast. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You will see now as we are talking. As they close service. So we'll go and buy more test biscuit. They will load it. They will go and buy more. And they say, this is the blood of Jesus. 10 o'clock, they have taken the blood of Jesus. Please don't take. Take water. Take water. In Jesus' name. Do you know that cockroach fast? 14 days. Cockroach can fast 14 days. Do you know that native chicken, they fast? To hatch the egg, they fast for 21 days. They don't eat. Anytime you see that native chicken run out, he has broken his fast. Oh, you don't know? It's because you didn't grow up in the village. <laughs> oh, so you don't know? They fast. Rats can fast for 28 days. Rats, rats, rats. It's just seven days old and you will still eat old. May you not miss it. What, what do you want to do? Carry your picture, come on there. Then send you. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you finish, come off, it's going to snap me. <laughs> Is there no balm in Gilead? That's the theme of our teaching, all the Sunday services. And the first service, we looked at understanding your right to total health. Top John and verse 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be Health is a state of well-being. It's a place to be. Healing is a process. Health is a state of well-being. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Hear me? You can't be in health if you are not prospering in light. If you are not prospering in the world, let the word of Christ dwell within you richly. The day the world stops dwelling in you richly, watch out, your health will begin to depreciate. What sustains your health is not the food you eat. If not, what happens to the madman that drinks dirty water? What happens to the madman that goes to the dustbin and pick food? I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. For your soul to prosper in the world, it means... You cannot stay without the word because staying without the word is depleting your health, reducing your divine immunity. Every one of us here, we have what we call divine immunity. There is a divine immunity each and every one of us here carries. That is why arrows can touch you. Arrows shall fly by day. Pestilence shall walk at noonday. It shall not come near thee. The reason is because the word is increasing your immunity. But you know what? You have a right to total health, but ignorance can keep you out of total health. Ignorance. The more ignorant you become, the more depleted your health becomes. The activities of darkness flourish well where light is absent.
Paul said, the God of his age has blinded the minds of many. Satan will prefer you ignorant than for you to know the truth. No wonder Jesus said, and you shall know the truth. And the truth you know shall set you free. You shall know the truth. When you become lighted, you become charged. Sickness, disease does not thrive in a charged atmosphere. Now, even naturally, I've discovered that mosquito does not operate well where the air condition is heavy. True of us? That is, you stay in an air-conditioned room now. Let the mosquito operate. Go, go catch him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He will look for where this will need to allow me to walk now. He will look for one place and go and hide. The reason why he's hiding, the room is charged. Likewise, when our bodies are charged, our spirit man is charged, our mind is charged with the word, sickness cannot operate. It cannot. Total health is your right, but you need light to take your right. My son, pay attention to my word. Incline thy ears unto my saints. 21. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Not only spirit now, your flesh. Do you know the sustaining power of your flesh is beyond the food but much more in the world? Head to all thy flesh. Head to all thy flesh. So as you grow in your word intake, you secure your health state. Your, the state of your health is secured as you grow in your word intake. <laughs> I remember a woman that came to meet my master one day. She was diagnosed of um, breast cancer. According to her, she has gone to several men of God to go and pray for them to pray for her and nothing happened. And he said, he said, I remember what Kenneth Higgins told one particular woman. That should be Joel Austin's wife. I mean, uh, John Austin's wife. Say, he has been to this person, he prayed, nothing happened, be to this person. You know, when you pray and nothing happened, they will think you don't get power. So, Kenneth Higgins said, told her, go and stay with the word. The doctors gave her six hours to leave. The woman is still living. He never died. The husband don't go. She's still there. Six hours. She's still there. Six hours turned to six days. Six days turned to six years. She's still counting more years. Now, she told the woman, go sit down with the world one hour every day. One hour every day. So the woman now bought a work clock and sets like goalkeeper to be watching the clock while she's reading the Bible. She started. As she started doing that, the first day she was watching, the second day, the third day, the fourth day she stopped looking at the clock. The word was now entering. And the spirit entered into me. 
Anytime you are reading the word, something is entering into you. Anytime you are reading the word, something is entering into you. And the spirit entered into me. The word entered her. Before the first month was over, cancer of the breast wiped out. No laying of hands, but laying of the word. Laying of the word. Cancer of the breast wiped out. Hear this? If you must take your portion of total health, this book of the law shall not depart. If the book departs, you will not take your part. So you must give attention to the word. What will the word do? Release striking revelation. If Jesus were to be here now, will he be sick? Will he be suffering what he is suffering? You know, there's a way understanding way down on you, you will react over a particular issue. No, it cannot be. I asked somebody a question one day, have you seen a barren fowl? Has anybody here seen a barren fowl before? Raise your hand if you have seen. I will buy from you. Have you seen a barren fowl? You are not permitted to be barren. I say you are not permitted to be barren. If there is no barren fowl, get ready. You must carry your baby. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Who has seen a barren goat? You say you have seen a barren goat. Where your hand? You can't. It will be anti-God for a goat to have a child and you don't have a child. No! It's not possible. I want to say to someone here, you have the right to reject any sickness. If you say no, heaven will not say yes to any sickness. I remember a man, he was to be operated on. In fact, they've even operated on him. So, as usual, the doctors, they come for a ward round every morning. So, after they finished the ward round, they gathered at one spot and they began to talk. And he was hearing what they were saying. They were saying that uh, this man, I don't think he can make it. That uh, all the signs are showing that uh, he will not make it. So as they finished talking, he now called one of them, please come. What were they saying? He said, no, 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 no. We are just um, looking at the whole situation everywhere. I say, I hear with you and they talk. But let me tell you, I'm not dying anywhere. He said, let me tell you, I'm not dying anywhere. You will see me when I will be discharged. When your will is in place, power will flow. The man told them, I'm not dying anywhere. You have a right to reject any affliction. Satan can only impose an affliction on you based on your ignorance and your acceptance. But the moment you react based on light, you will give up. You will give up. What is in the world that makes healing possible? In the first service, we looked at the surgical power 
the medicinal power of the word. And we are made to understand the word has operating force. It can operate. It can uproot. It has cleansing power. It has purging power. It sweeps through your body unannounced. In this service, we are looking at the creative power of the world. The world has creative power. It can create and recreate. It can reshape, reform, repackage, reestablish. Jesus was only speaking the word. That is why if you have the word, you have the cure. The virtues in the word delivers the cure for any affliction. These words that I speak, they are spirits and they are what? Life. So every time the word is spoken, Life is released. Life goes forth. Not just ordinary life, eternal life. The very life of God. So shall my word be. Because my word creates life. Job said, The breath of the Almighty has made me. And the spirits. Of the Lord has given me life. So every time we speak the word, we are speaking life. The word creates the person and the presence of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the surface of the deep. And God said, let there be light and there was light. So if you have the word, you have no need for any other thing. The word can cure depression. So word seekers are cure seekers. Every time you are seeking the word, you are seeking the cure. Because it carries nutritional content. To create what is missing. That is why those that come regularly to church... They have high tendency to stay healthy. Because the more you keep hearing the word, the more healing is activated. Your system is getting serviced. You may come depressed, but you will go lighted. You may come with a pain somewhere, but something must leave you before you live here. Because it is not only the words that is servicing you, the angels, they are servicing your body. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, to heavenly Jerusalem, to the city of the living God. Hebrew chapter 12, let's read it. Hebrew chapter 12 from verse 21. Let's take it from verse 22, sorry. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of the just man made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. So as you are seated now, something is speaking for you. 
something is speaking over you no wonder scripture said in Luke 5 and verse 17 as Jesus began to teach the power of God was present to him there is power flow every time the word is released creating creating oh I won't forget one young boy that followed his uncle to the church one day one of our stations that boy cannot walk pole to pole without resting he has a weak they told him he has a weak heart a weak altar so his challenge is that he cannot walk, that is, he cannot walk the length of this church now without stopping somewhere. He must rest. A 13 year old boy. But guess what? He came on holiday. The word was being released. The word was going forth. Funny enough, he didn't tell his uncle that it was his challenge. The word was being released. The word was going forth. Something was entering him. Something was entering him. After two weeks, they normally come in a car to church. He told his uncle he wants to trek. They thought he was something was wrong. He said, no, you people should be going. I want to trek. I want to check something. They didn't know he wants to prove the reality of his recovery. He trekked without stopping and came to church. So as he came, he told his uncle he wants to give testimony. His uncle said, you won't embarrass me now. So his uncle now asked him, what is it in? Tell me first before you will go. So he now told his uncle that before he came, that he normally stop and continue. That something is making him weak in his heart. But after two weeks that he has been fellowshipping here, that the thing is no longer doing him. That was why he told them that he wanted to trek and come to church without stopping. And after service, he also trekked back. The uncle too was amazed. He said, okay, go and share. Now hear me. He said, the mother, they never knew that one day help will come for him. And they never knew his help will come from the word. God healed him perfectly. I want to say to someone here, whatever no man has ever known that is troubling your head, by the power in the name of Jesus, I decree you healed. Amen. I decree your lungs healed. Amen. I decree your heart healed. Amen. I decree your veins healed. Amen. Anyone under the attack of high blood pressure, I deflate that high blood pressure Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. He was healed. The world healed him. The world healed him. He was healed. So shall my word be that goeth forth, it shall not return unto me void. Hear me? The boy was perfectly made whole. In 2013, another sister had of this testimony. This same testimony, the sister said, eh, You share that testimony. I have the same problem. What did you say to the boy? Say it to me. I said, just be in church and be hearing the word. That was all. There was nothing special. Just keep increasing your faith. Keep believing. Guess what happened? Her own didn't even reach one month. She said, Pastor, we are saving money for me to go for surgery. But today, I am totally healed. The word has creative power. It can create. For by him all things were made. Visible and invisible. The one that created you can recreate you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. John chapter 1, let's look at that scripture. John chapter 1 from verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Verse 2. So, the same was in the beginning with God. Look at verse 3 now. All things. How many things? Are you sure it's all things? All things were made by him. And without him was not 
anything made that was made. All things were made. Nothing was made without him. Now let's take a look at Hebrew chapter 11 and verse 3. Hebrew 11 and verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed. That word frame means to create by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. All things were framed. All things were framed. So as you are speaking, you are creating. If you say be healed, you must be healed. If you say growth, dry, growth must dry. Every time you speak God's word, you stir up something to be created. What is soever you desire when you pray, even though can I take said, even though it's not available, because you have declared it, it will be created because of you. Even though it is not available physically, for your sake it will be created. Because there is nothing we are looking for that is not available, is existing in the storehouse of heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, you are speaking and force the release from the heavenlies and make it physical, established. So, the word has creative power. I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to create? Is there anything for me too hard for me to create? God can create it. God can create it. I say God can create it. I say God can create it. So for any one of us here to live in total health, the word must be flowing forth. The word must keep flowing. You keep the torrent of the word flowing. The more the word is flowing, the more your health is established. When you stay dry of the word, you stay dry of your health. Your health begins to dry up. People will be wondering, what is happening to you? Do you know you need the word to stay joyful? A merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a dry spirit crushes the bone. So you suffer more dryness. Thy words we have found and I did eat them. And they became to me the joy and rejoicing of my soul. So you must not stay word dry. It's risky to stay word dry. State, Satan is looking for opportunity to get at you. But he can never get at you when you are word full. It is always when you are word dry. But hear me? You have to be very careful and sensitive. Do you know why? The enemy is looking for your loose moments, your careless moments. We have too many distractions to contend with. Too many distractions. Too many distractions. We have our Bible with us, but it's like civilization now for, for one to read the Bible. Civilized people. City believers. Many claim now they don't need to carry the Bible to church. They have their, the Bible in their phone. How many times have you read the Bible in your phone? But you can be on your phone, Facebook, three hours. Non-stop. If I'm lying, say I'm lying. Am I correct? Yes. Satan wants to keep your attention from things that are not real. Where did they go? Facebook, they pursue you. The enemy knows how to take your attention away so that you will stay what dry. He wants you to be concerned with other matters that didn't really matter. What is taking your attention is what does not matter to you.
Jesus told Martha, one thing is needful. And your sister is focusing on that which is needful. But you, you are busy about over other matters. Over other matters. When will you place yourself on discipline? On a daily basis, you must focus on the word. Ten minutes. Five minutes. Fifteen minutes. Check the things you do every 24 hours. How many minutes do you allocate to the world? When you go back, you do it. How many minutes do you allocate to the world? If you claim you are busy, show us your result for being busy. Show us your result for being busy. I've been busy. I've been busy. Show us your result for being busy. It's a, time, it's a sign that you are busy over the minor and not busy over the major. But may the Lord help you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. amen. In this covenant day of marital breakthrough, I'd like us to understand no one can break through over his marital destiny than the heavens that are open for him. If the heavens are not open, you suffer more breakdown than breakthroughs. Both as an individual seeking to be married and as a family, for you to flourish, you need the heavens to be open. I said in, this, in the third service, I'm going to anoint every single male, female. You want to marry before this year is over? It's possible. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That prayer may be for only 5 person or for 10 person or 15 person or 20 person. But it is to you according to your faith. It is to you according to your faith. If the heavens are closed, the earth will be tight. The earth will lock up. Until the heavens open over your head and over your family, there is no connectivity between the heavens and the earth. Angels ascending, angels descending cannot take place in a closed heaven. You can't enjoy the flow of favor. The flow of blessings. The flow of supply. You can't. Jesus said, one thing so ever you bound here on earth is bound in heaven. What thing so ever you lose here on earth, you lose in heaven. You hear me? The heavens must be open before the earth will lose for you. Before the earth will open up the treasure. The profit of the earth is <laughs> for everyone all. But not everyone can take it. Why? The heavens are locked. No wonder. When your prayer life begins to go low, the enemy takes advantage of you and lock the heavens. I hope you know the heavens can be locked. Oh, it's in, it's in the Bible. Elijah prayed that it shall not rain. Did it rain? Scripture said it did not rain for a space of three and a half years. I saw something yesterday. One particular city in South Africa, it had not rained for the past two years. One, city in, one particular city in South Africa, it has not rained for the past two years. So all the men of God, they gather to pray. Come and see rain. Come and see rain. The heavens can be locked. Hear me? When your heavens are locked, your marital destiny is sealed. Your family go through dryness. You go through wilderness experience. But I tell you the truth, you have the key in your hand. I say you have the key in your hand. Yeah. Today, anyone that is going through a closed heaven, the barrier will break. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. 
for a single when the heavens are locked up against you you go through sequence of disappointments sequence of rejection sequence of failure for a brother no job disfavor help us we stay far it may look good and promising but yet evil visitors has laid siege over his heavens there is a heaven over every man's head when you go back read it Deuter I mean, Deuteronomy 28 from verse 13 you will see there there is a heaven over every man's head so you must be particular about the heavens over your head no wonder Jesus said why men slept the enemy came to sow tars the enemy is always waiting for your sleeping moment always watching out for your sleeping moment for your lazy moment for your complacent moment what you are complaining about you didn't know that forces have locked up matters in the heavens against you you are now blaming everybody is the reason why things are not working it's a lie nobody is the reason why things will work for you if things are working you triggered it if things are not working you also triggered it if someone say he will not help you forget him god is your ultimate helper are you hearing what i'm saying now god is your ultimate helper you have no reason to blame anybody for anything thank god he even said that he will not help you because if he makes the mistake of helping you he will take the glory and god said my glory will i not share with any man are you hearing what i'm saying now but hear me you need to take back your spiritual fervency and fire so that you can tear the heavens over your head open when your heavens are open you go from progress to progress from favor to favor from breakthrough to breakthrough from success to success so you need your head to be open the heavens over your head must be open and you know as the heavens open wider more success more breakthrough more opportunity more blessings blessings can flow beyond the size of your open heaven you cannot be favored more than the size of your open heaven the opening of the heavens determine the flow of the blessings but you know what if there is anything that must make the heavens over your life clean up tell your neighbor clean up many want to see open heaven but they don't want to close they don't want to clean up scripture say consecrate yourself for tomorrow the lord will do amazing things in your midst if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me will not hear you if i regard iniquity in my heart you close the door All those little, little sins, besetting sin, sin of bitterness, sin of anger, sin of pride. Purge yourself. You want the heavens to be open? Purge yourself. Purge yourself. Purge yourself. No one can clean you because no one can check you. No one knows the state of your heart. No one knows the content of your heart. The Lord God is my son and shade. He will give grace. He will give glory. He said, no good thing will the Lord withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. I don't know what is in your heart, though, so I cannot say. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But when your heart is free, void of the deposit of the wicked, the heaven must answer. And God will answer you today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. If a brother disappointed you, let him go. Let him go. Stop tying him rope. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, I just remember an incident. A sister, they grew up in the campus fellowship. They were doing well. Everybody knew that this brother, they were together. 
and they were expecting that they will marry. You know, some people were a victim of those things. So all of a sudden, the brother didn't marry the sister. He went and married another person. This thing happened around, I think it should be 2013 or thereabout, or 2014. So she called me. She was narrating the story. So she was feeling bad that that brother didn't marry her. The brother called her that she should forgive. I took time to listen. And I asked her, but you are married. Are you desiring that uh, that one should die? He said, no. He said, release him quick, quick. If not, you are a winch. I gave it to her. Didn't waste time. What are you holding him for? Oh, you want a uh, corner, corner? I said, no. Release him. What are you holding him for? If it was meant for you, it would have come for you. And since he went his way, thank God. Let him go. Do you know what? As I was talking, she was crying on the phone. I said, hey, God don't catch you. So you want marry her? Even as you don't marry. You know, some people still do those things. They will marry, but they are keeping secrets. As I release him, quick, quick. After I drop this call, now call him and pray for him. Release him and tell him it shall be well with you. You will succeed. You will go forward. You will be blessed. Asa, will you do it? She didn't answer me. I said, will you do it? He said, I will try. I said, don't try. Do it. Guess what? After he prayed for the young man, doors started opening for him. Don't lock up anybody. Release them. Bid them goodwill. Hear me? I repeat in this altar. Anyone you are locking in your heart is the reason why doors will not open for you. I am saying it. Release him, let him go. Release her, let her go. Let him go. How can you carry a bag of cement in your heart? You will not work well. Am I saying something to someone? Doors just opened for the brother. The brother started flourishing. Things started working. In fact, there was joy in their home. I said, good. Now that you have released him, God will also release you. Him who sins you bind, they are bound. Him who sins you retain, they are retained. If you lock them, God lock you. Oh, you don't know that God locks people? Go and read it again. It will lock you. That's why some sisters are not married though. They are thinking of the hurt that took place. Pastor, you don't know what you are saying. If you know how he dealt with me, thank God he didn't kill you. I said, thank God he didn't kill you. Maybe you are a brother. I say, Pastor, she has been eating the money, eating the money. Thank God she didn't eat your life. Let her go. Tell your neighbor, let her go. Tell another person, let him go. <laughs> if the old does not go, the new will not come. If the fake does not go, the real will not appear. For your family breakthrough, for your family open heaven, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase. 10,000. You want to see open heaven as a family? <laughs> Can two work together except they be agreed? Amos 3 verse 3. I have seen in many homes the reason why there is no flow of blessing, flow of favor, flow of success. Everybody wants to do his thing. Feeling superiority. That his idea is superior. There is nothing like that. You have what we call die vision. 
That is, the wife has a vision. The husband has his vision. You do your thing, I do my thing. You may not succeed. You may not go forward. It may not work well. Even though you have something in mind to do, support one another. Give your goodwill. Pray for it. Contribute to it. Before you know what's happening, they, let me tell you, God is a humorous God. Do you know, he checks our hearts per minute per second. I, the Lord, search the heart and I examine the race to reward every man. Sabi, sabi. Some wives, they are too arrogant and proud. I will show you. I'll be the one feeding you in this house. Your pocket will soon dry to let you know you are not the head. You are the assistant headmaster. Are you hearing what I'm telling you now? If you want your family heavens to be open, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. You increase the speed of progress when your agreement is in place. If mama did not give papa support, you know what will have happened? He will be preaching with annoyance. There will not be spiritual momentum to drive the ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> there is what we call spiritual bonding. When your spirit becomes bonded with your wife, man, there is no door that can be shut against you. No door. So God checks the heart to determine the opening of the heavens. Let's repeat this scripture before we rise up to pray now. Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bed, even Aaron's bed, that went down to the skirts of his garments, which means not only one. It was affecting all his clothes. As the dew of Hammon, as, and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, for there, say with me, for there, yeah. blessing has direction. Supply has direction. For there, there talks of a place. Scripture says, while they were in the wilderness, God was sending quails to their camp. Which means the blessings of, of God knows the location of every family. For there the Lord command the blessing. The blessing. Even life forevermore. You want to enjoy continuous open heaven? You must stay bonded. You pray together. You power it together. <laughs> what in so ever you bound here on earth, you bound in heaven. You hear me? You become unbeatable entity every time you walk well with your wife. The heavens must stay open. You never know a backward open heaven. You only know a forward open heaven. Every year must be a plus for you. Every year doors are opening. Every year favor is flowing. Every year help has arising. Do you know what again? The strength of your unity will determine the helpers you will attract as a family. The strength of your unity will determine the quality of your helpers. The helpers are in different forms and in different capacities. If you are not enjoying the ministry of helpers, go and check it. Something is wrong somewhere. And when helpers stay far, men struggle will continue. You need helpers to arrive at where God has in mind for you. You need them. You need them. And Joseph, I mean, <laughs> scripture say concerning David, First Chronicle 12, verse 21, 
First Chronicle 12, verse 21. And they have David against the barn of the rovers. For they were all mighty men of valor and were captains of the host. For at that time, day by day, say with me, day by day, day by day. there came to David to help him until it was a great host like the host of heaven. So you continuously enjoy the ministry of helpers. As helpers are coming, your dreams are getting accomplished. Your family expectation is coming to pass. The expectation of your children, they are coming to pass. Why? You are walking as one. Rise up to your feet. You are going to pray for yourself now. I will also pray for you. Whatever I have done that have closed the heavens against me, blood of Jesus, break the barrier for me. Intervene for me. Whatever I have done that has shut the heaven against me, against my family, lift up your voice. Oh, I want you to pray because something is about to happen now. Lift up your voice and pray. Whatever I have done that, made, that has made life to be difficult, that has made life to be tight, Whatever I've done that is making me walk in a closed heaven, in a wilderness circle, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, I ask for your intervention. I ask for your intervention. I ask for your intervention. Leron da kleketeri aba rushebo elotari by the blood of Jesus. Whatever I've done that is bringing the heavens to be closed against me, Lord, let your mercy prevail. Lift up your voice and pray. Let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. Whatever is making my family go through hardship, go through cycles of struggle, let your mercy prevail. Over my marital destiny, by the blood of Jesus, let your mercy prevail. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Let your mercy prevail. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to lift up our voice. Any power attacking the heavens over my head to be close. Oh Lord, by your fire, terminate them. Terminate the assignment. Terminate them. Terminate the assignment. Every witchcraft activity, every enchantment of wickedness to close the heavens against me. Oh Lord, by your fire and by the blood of Jesus, terminate them and terminate the assignment. Lift up your voice and pray. Every oppression, activity of witchcraft, of evil personality to close the heavens against me by your fire and by the blood of Jesus I command them to be terminated and let the oppression be terminated by your fire and by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus in jesus name we pray you are going to pray oh heavens over my head over my destiny over my marriage open by fire in the name of jesus christ lift up your voice and begin to pray oh heavens over my destiny over my career over my marriage over my 
my family. Open by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open by fire. 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 Open. Zikote prekete liya, zakuke prekete, lerando jegonanga yaga dagara. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Until you are born again, the heavens are see closed against you. Jesus said, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If a man open, I will come." So if you don't open, the heavens are still closed. Because the key is still in his hand. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are. All eyes closed, all heads bow. Put your right hand on your chest. You want to make it right with Jesus. You want to welcome him to your heart as your Lord and as your Savior. Pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that with prayer with me, congratulations. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come right now. I want to pray with you before we round up the prayer. Put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you. Take a step right now. Come quickly. Put your hands together. cast out. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Lord, by this oil, I decree the heavens open over them. Whatever legal hold the enemy had over you, by this oil, the siege is broken. The hold is destroyed. In Jesus' name I pray. Put the oil upon them right now. Everybody put your right hand on your head as I pray for you. I decree as the servant sent over this house, the heavens over your family is declared open. Any witchcraft operation and activity fighting your open heaven, let them be roasted by fire. 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 It is written, Thy gates shall be open continually. I pray for you by the anointing back in this altar. The heavens over your life and family is declared open. For greater glory open. For greater blessings open. For greater success open. You will not suffer wilderness again. You will not suffer dryness again. So shall it be. In Jesus name we pray. Put those hands together for Jesus. Just turn and follow the